All right. I'm Brandon of Colorado here for YouTube, and joining me, my buddy Mark Gilman at I under slash Barnabas. We are here to pitch the Halloween video game. No, no, not the one from Atari. Not the one way, way back. A new one. <laughs> so, yeah. Mark, my friend, what would you like to see? Oh, my goodness. I've been really excited about this and thinking about this all day. Um, all right. So, um, I would like, here's what I was thinking. Um, at first, I was thinking I would love to have a movie based on, like, Halloween 1 and 2. But I think something like a brand new story, right, featuring Michael Myers and having um uh i guess like you don't know a whole lot about the player but um where it makes it feel like you're the one that's being stalked by michael where you're not the hero you're the victim in the story right i like that i could see that sort of have you ever played alien isolation i haven't okay it's the best alien game ever made um okay and it's available for PS4. I played it originally on the 360. My wife had got it for me one year, and she goes, I've been hearing some reviews about it. I'm like, I'll give it a try. Mm -hmm. You play as Amanda Ripley, oh, and Ellen Ripley's daughter, and she's looking for her mother, where her mother went missing. She's just look, looking in that part of the solar system. And so she's a mechanic, and she goes aboard a station called Sevastopol, lo and behold, they've been like, androids are on the loose, and there's an alien on the loose. And you are, it's a stealth game, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I it's, love that. It's terrifying as hell. Um, you play this game in the dark, and you will be like, what's that? What's in my room? It's just I love that. <laughs> I love that. But I played that, I got, the first time, I died like eight times. Mm -hmm. The next time I only died twice. Mm -hmm. And the game is hard as hell, but like you got to listen for the alien to go in and out of the vent. You got to listen for the, this thing moves quick. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's terrifying. You get like noisemakers, flares. Mm -hmm. The pistol and gun are pretty much, they're, they're useful, but they make noise. So you got to watch where you use them. So, my thing for a Halloween game is, first things first, every, every Halloween character, every version of Michael Myers is playable. And yes, that includes the Rob Zombie ones. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking 78, 80, 81, 82, 88, 89, 90, mm -hmm. you know, 95, or 95, I should say, 90, 98. And Resurrection, Rob Zombie's two films, yes, the new ones, yes, every iteration of Laurie Stroh, Jamie Lloyd, Dr. Sam Loomis, huh? and literally take Haddonfield, and you're, you're, you're one player, and you're roaming the streets of Haddonfield, you got a flashlight and a gun, mm -hmm. and you don't know where Michael Myers is, you're just combing the streets, all of a sudden, you hear the synthesizer. Bam! He pops up and he kills your ass. Like, holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love like, it. Like, where did he just come from? Anywhere. Mm -hmm. that, that's. I remember playing like this is so old because I remember playing the original Friday the Thirteenth for oh, like I'll... for the Nintendo. Yeah. And it was always Jason could pop up in any cabin. Well, Jason could pop up outside of any cabin, too. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it would be Michael can pop up anywhere. Now, obviously, if Michael's popping up other places and killing someone else, he's not after you. He's after someone else. So, once you, you don't know someone else has been killed, that's the disadvantage. You don't get to hear that noise unless it's you. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want the player to be tipped off. Yeah. It make it that challenging. I think that's one thing. The only reason you knew the alien was killing off somebody. Because literally it was in the fucking next room. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so, it's like the, you could hear them screaming and shooting and the alien just killing them like like no one's business. Uh-huh. So usually it was in the, in the next room or the same room, and then the alien would come in the room you're at, and you're hiding in a locker. It's like, go away, go away, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but so that that's something I could see like in a Halloween video game where can you hide? Here's the thing: you don't know when to hide. That would be the that would be the drawback. Yeah, you could hide, sure. It's not like Michael Myers knows where you're at, but you wouldn't know when Michael was stalking you. You you get, we'll say a proximity movement setting. Basically, Michael, the only time you get to, okay, you, you see how far your passenger seat is from your driver's seat, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's when you would know Michael was that close to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. I, okay. But it's that's too- it. Like, that's the proximity you get to know Michael's close. And it's like, you either fire or you run like hell. Yeah. Because if you if you choose to fight, you may be, you're probably screwed. Mm -hmm. Right. What 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 else would you like to see in a Halloween video game? Okay, for me, um, I guess a game. Here's what I was thinking. Um. (laughs) I would like to have it set kind of like in a modern, like in modern time. Right. And where um, it's sort of like you are, and I, I haven't quite thought the, you know, the origin of the story, but something brings you to Haddonfield. You're a brand new character. You're basically yourself. Um, maybe you're looking for someone there. And you're going through the town of Haddonfield at night trying to find them. Um, and, you know, you're basically exploring through the town. You've got the school, like where Michael wrote Sam Hain on the chalkboard. And you've got these key locations, Haddonfield Hospital, um, that you go through. Um, and it's dark and Michael is stalking you. And um, what I was thinking was more like you're kind of like Silent Hill Shattered Memories where Mm. you don't really get a weapon. Your your only options are basically to run and hide or you can struggle, but you try to, you know, you've got to get away from Michael and you're not going to have like a whole lot of things in your inventory to to get away and to keep that tension. And uh, I would love for there to be no music throughout the game except when Michael's on screen. Mm-hmm. Amplify sound effects, have things fall off the walls, you know, whatever. But when Michael shows up, either he bursts out somewhere or you just hear like the music. Uh, I think it's called the shape stalks, the yeah. dun, 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 and then, you know, he's coming and then you've got to, you know, try to look for some place to hide or some place to go. And I think something like that would be good and maybe roughly about a five or six hour um, play time, you know, to to get through the game, but have multiple endings to keep it kind of coming back. I like the create, like create your own character story mode because that would be something fun. Like instead of just using the characters we all know, because I could see just everybody picking a certain character. Yeah, yeah. Where, whereas, okay, create your own character. I love the no weapon strategy, but would you have where you could pick up things to use sort of like in a silent Hill? Yeah. Like, you know, it's, I guess it depends on which room you're in your environment. You you pick up something that's close to you, but it's, you're basically on, you know, all you have is your wits. That's about the only weapon you have other than, you know, what's readily available. If you can get to it before Michael gets you. Who, okay, like, so, what are your, for weapons, like, what are we, I would definitely say, like, a revolver, you could get a revolver, mm-hmm. shotgun, I would say you can't unlock shotgun unless you do story mode first, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, like, have things where they can be unlockable, the The one, the, the one Michael that is unlocked automatically is the 78 Myers. That's it. But you got to go through story mode to unlock the rest. 
And yes, you have to complete story mode to unlock all the Michaels, all the other playable characters. Mm-hmm. And yes, you can still. I like the create a character option you presented. That would be cool. I would love to create my own character. I would probably definitely just like create some random dude. Like oh, I'm gonna die anyway. <laughs> so. Yep. And I love it because it's not a story that you're familiar with, so you're never comfortable when Michael is on screen. Right, like you could be like walking down the streets of Hadfield looking for whoever it is you're looking for. So let's take, let's take a creative character, name him Thomas Silva. I don't know, and have him, and he's there to find his best friend who moved to Haddonfield. I know he lives in his town, but I don't know his exact address. And you're just looking all through Haddonfield. Meanwhile, you don't know you're getting stalked. Right. There's trick or treaters on, sh- and here's the thing: the trick, the PC trick or treaters, mm-hmm. aren't safe either. Like they could be killed off. Like you could have see like a computer trick or treater, tr- then later you could see them dead, and be like, oh, oh shit, that's that's not good. So right. it's sort of like a scare for you to see the dead body. Mm-hmm. Red Dead Redemption Two was good at this. Like you would. There would be a house in the middle of a prairie or in the middle of a freaking board. I think this is at, uh, I'm trying to think of a location where it's at, but I think it's in Scarlet Meadows. Mm-hmm. There's this house and it's a, it's a, like a farm field. And I'm thinking, you know what, I'm just going to go in and rob these people. You know, it's all good. You know, I'm, I pull out my scarf. I pull out my six-shooter revolver. Like, I'll just skull cap anybody who you know, stops me, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I have intention. My character, Arthur Morgan, has intentions of murdering these people if they stop me. I walk in the house. They're dead. I didn't do it. And it's like, oh, oh, shit. Who did that? They're, like, massacred. Yeah. Like, there, there's like, there ones laying on the floor, ones laying over the table. There's blood on the floor. I'm like, okay, this is creepy. I wasn't expecting that. Uh-huh. And that's what I mean by like unexpected moments where you're walking down the street or you're walking down an alleyway, and you just don't know whether you're going to see a body or not. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty intense. I like that. That's that's pretty tense. Yeah. And that would be like it would kind of be an incentive to jump in and try to save other people that like if the game did have multiple endings, it's based on like if you save a certain person, then it makes the story go a different way and things there's variables in it. So, uh, yeah, like if you happen to save this person at this point, then it can change the ending and the whole course of the game. I would say this, though, too, the the one sort of hint you would maybe get to know that you might have to save somebody would be when you maybe you pick up your first actual weapon like a gun. So let's say you pick up your gun. OK, this is where things are really going to might pick up for you, but you're not going to know what until you maybe either see it or Maybe you see Michael getting ready to stab a kid. You have one option. You can try to shoot at Michael or run over and take the knife yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. And if you don't, that kid is dead. And it's on you, mister. That's right. So it's all Mark Gillen's fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it always is. <laughs> what first? <laughs> no, but do you think that they can because Sean Carpenter has been wanting to score a ton of stuff. Do you think they could get him to score a video game, a Halloween video game? Absolutely, I think they would. And I think his son would be, you know, would be on board with it as well. Um, I think, uh, you know, like if they, if they had the right developer and, you know, enough hype surrounding it, yeah, I think, I think they would totally get on board and it would, it would be problem solved, you know, it would sell itself. Because I think if um, that would give it a lot of credibility, if people knew that um, John Carpenter was involved in the score, they would think, okay, this game is absolutely legit and approved by John Carpenter. So yeah, it's this is one. This is the one to get. Just for I want John Carpenter to record one thing. 
to like to call like for the police instead of having being Lee Brackett, the sheriff John Carpenter. You got to call John Carpenter for backup. Yeah, Michael <laughs> Myers is in the town half of, and literally, I want John Carpenter to say, "Get the hell out of here, kid! It's Halloween. It's a prank, and just end up on your ass." Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I loved about the game, um, the Silent Hill Shattered Memories, when you would call nine one one. And they would pick up and said, our call is showing that you're coming, that you're calling from Silent Hill. They said, unfortunately, we regret to inform you that you're beyond our help. And then they hang up on you. So, yeah, that's that's great. I loved it. There's a, there's a sequence in Downpour. Like, if you see the cops, avoid them at all costs. Like, if you ever play Silent Hill Downpour, avoid the cops like the play because they're just demons anyway. <laughs> and you got to call back the cop if when you get to the station, you'd have to call back the cop car so they quit patrolling after your ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, why? Why? Because you're in Silent Hill, damn it. Exactly. But I could sort of... Here's the thing, too. There could be another scenario where maybe you're playing as a family who just moved into the Myers house. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's that. And you come home and the family's dead. And now you either have to go find Michael or you have an opportunity. When you play as Michael, that would be something too as well. Because there are going to be where you're playing as Michael. So maybe the challenges for Michael could be get so many victims in this frame of time. Uh You know, make it challenging for the person playing the killer as well because you do want that feel but the one thing i would have would be like the thick fog like the creepy like the creepy sort of the breathing get nick castle to record michael breathing and for the game make it feel authentic oh that would be great you know what i mean if if they that would be something that would be really cool and hey get dick warlock involved too you know why not you know, because you're going to be able to play as his Michael, too. So why not get them to involved and do the breathing and motion capture for this, these games where we look, it's it's well past time for another Halloween video game. Uh-huh. And that's something to, like I'll give a great example. For soundtrack, when I play, there's a scene in St. Denis in New Orleans and Red Dead Red- Redemption 2. When you're in a cemetery, it's a mission. They play the Phantasm theme for that mission. Oh, nice. Where you stop the thieves in the middle of a cemetery. Because as soon as you, you, I heard it, I'm like, that's from fucking Phantasm. Holy shit. And you're in the graveyard and you're getting sh- buckshot worth the shit. Like, there's bullets fucking ricocheting and shit. I just took my freaking double barrel shotgun i had it in first person but too. like you can either play in third or first so i had this in first person but and this dude like jump scared me out the tombstone and i blew his freaking head off uh-huh. <laughs> jesus christ wow. that could be something fun too where you're playing in first person but for halloween and you're michael myers and you're going <sighs> you know you're hearing the breathing and shit and it's like oh oh shit Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. I like that. Do you think that they'll actually do, like, we'll get a Halloween game? Because I know they're doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We've got a Friday the 13th game. Mm-hmm. Do you think we'll get another Halloween game? Honestly, I I hope so. Um, I did. I, I would love to see it, you know, as long as it's done well and not like... Uh, I want them to make something really scary, not like, you know, Michael Myers pinball or, or something like that, you know, or like a, like some kind of little mini mobile game. I would love to have a full, you know, a full horror survival game featuring Michael Myers. I think it, it would really, really do well. If they can't get Rockstar to do it, they should get the team that did AO in isolation. Mm-hmm. I'm- because they did a freaking fabulous job on that game. I mean, for 
it doesn't have a ton of cutscenes either. And that's not that's something I want too with Halloween. I don't want a shitload of cutscenes. I want the playability of it. Right. My, my biggest nitpick with certain games is you're more watching them than playing them. If I want to watch something, I'll go buy a movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> or I'll throw something in my DVD player to watch it and not instead of you know throwing something in my PS4. And playing it, I'd rather have it where I could play the game instead of watch the game. I don't want to watch the game. Right. That's as much a fan as I am of like the Metal Gear Solid series. Um, sometimes I, I would find like, you know, you would have a break of like cutscenes that would go on for over 30 minutes and then you would resume gameplay. And I mean, the story in it was killer and I love Metal Gear Solid. But at times it was just like, okay, I want to get back to playing the game. Seven's issue aren't that the like Final Fantasy Seven. If you ever play it, like the remake, it's not that the cutscenes are overly long. It's that they're there's moments they're in like like right next to each other. Mm-hmm. And that like the sewer sequence is the worst. Mm-hmm. No, wait, I'm trying to think. Yeah, where you get dropped from. Um, the, uh. Dawn Cornos. Yep. That's the worst because there's like cutscene, cutscene, and like later you're walking through another cutscene, and it's like, I really don't need all these cutscenes. I get what, like, I get why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. They're trying to sort of hint to you that Aerith knows what's going to happen, that this is a time travel story Mm -hmm. uh, of two people, basically, Seth Roth and Aerith. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're basically and i get that they're but you could do that without all that right like there's and uh, to prove this too the one cutscene where they do this most remember when cloud falls through the church yeah okay spoiler alert for those who haven't played it but now in the original game cloud tells Aerith he's he was in soldier mm-hmm. not in this game though not when he first meets her. But then when she sees him again, she says, oh, he was in Soldier. And I'm thinking, I didn't say that to you. Right. So how else would you know that unless you're from another time? Mm-hmm. So it's, that's that's sort of the hint that the Aerith you see now was the original one, the dot. So... And it's a well enough hint for the audience to get. Like, you don't need all the melodrama later. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't need that. You don't need Aerif sort of in the sewer sequence, like, sort of hinting that she knows what's going to happen. You could already guess that at that scene from there, from the church scene. Right. So, with Halloween, I don't want a bunch of cutscenes where Lori Stroh, Jamie Lee Curtis is talking, where Danielle Harris is talking. Yes, put them in the goddamn game. From a voice standpoint, but play it where it's you're doing something from a playable standpoint. You don't need a cutscene for somebody to talk. They, I'll give a great example. I'll use Red Dead. There's moments when you can say hi to somebody without a cutscene, or somebody can just have a conversation with you, and it's not a cutscene. You stop and you talk to the person. Or you could just pass them by. Hey, there's a killer on the streets. Say, like, it's as easy as hitting the, the that button where warn or basically have two options. Warn or not to warn. Whereas in Red Dead, there, I think it's um, greet or antagonize. So instead of greet and antagonize, warn or not to warn. And yes, not warning someone can affect what happens to you. Like, if you don't warn somebody and that person dies, that's a deduction in your score. Yeah. Like, sure, you could run the risk of not warning them and nothing happened to you. Sure. Yeah. But you also run the risk of, hey, they could die because there's a killer. There is a killer out there. So it's sort of you're damned if you do or you're damned if you don't. And yep. you got to sort of, it's sort of a flip of the coin and you better hope it lands. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 
with the now we're getting a Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. What are you hoping to see? Um, really, I'm just hoping to see some just some over the top fun with this. Um, I've got a game called Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so you know, I'm just hoping that it stays true to the name, right? I remember. I remember when the One Evil Dead came out for the PlayStation 1, I think it was. It might have been PS2 where you had to put the gasoline in the chainsaw and yeah. it's and then you're trying to shoot the deadites with the double barrel and you would be out of ammunition like what happened? What mm-hmm. happened? The guns clicking cuz you're you're out of ammo and you're like trying to fill up the chainsaw and you would be getting attacked. There I'd like to see that with, like, text chainsaw master. Like, look, Leatherface has a chainsaw. He should have to refill that chainsaw of gasoline. I agree. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? That's sort of like a realistic moment in a game where, okay, yes, you can use that chainsaw. And if you get to be the other Sawyer family members, they carry a gun. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, you have to reload your gun. But also, what I would give for the players and the antagonist even in a halloween game too in text Chain- text chainsaw massacre the ability to craft stuff mm-hmm. you know where now not michael necessarily not help but you talked about using your wits where you can craft something you can craft maybe a knife or something or a trap um you know that's something you could see in a halloween game maybe you could lay a trap for michael mm-hmm. You know, or you could lay a trap for Leatherface, or you can, with the Sawyer family and Tex Chainsaw Massacre, you could craft, like, ammunition. You can craft, like, shotgun shells would be a great example. Uh-huh. Oh, that's cool. Right? Really? I like that. Because you could, that's something you can do with Red Dead, too. Like you, like, you get a pamphlet of how to make explosive shotgun shells. And yes, they will explode when you shoot somebody. <laughs> somebody was a sick puppy and decided to, you know, oh, oh I'm going to shoot this PC over here and see what happens to their body. Oh, oh, shit. Yeah. And then, I, then, I, then I was being shotgunned by the Magnificent Seven after that because I was wanted better alive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm always like, what did you do? I'm like, I, I may have blew someone's insides out, out of their body, honey. The thing is, you're like, you know, dusting them off of your clothes. They're all over you. What's, yeah. really, what's really the worst part about that game, mm-hmm. and this is true, too, mm-hmm. and it's I get it, too. Your horse is a character in that game. If your horse dies and you have no horse reviver, your best bet is steal the nearest horse or run like the Dickens. And here's the worst part. When there's a loud bang or noise, most horses take off. Like there's no, they'll like, see ya. Mm-hmm. I had my horse buck me off when a bear charged me. And the, oh, I, was, I was fair game for the bear. Uh-huh. My character stabbing the bear. He kills the bear. But my life was like this. He's like covered. He's got a scar down here. His back is covered in blood. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm like, no respect. No respect. My wife's like, what are you going to do? I was so pissed at, at, your horse. at, at my horse for doing this because I had bonded with this thing. So mm-hmm. good. I'm like, I took out my shotgun. Mm-hmm. I shot my own fucking horse. For this I probably went Mad Dog Tannen from Back to the Future 3. <laughs> I just shot the horse. So. Right? Right? I'm just like, the, like, and as soon as I shot, I'm like, justice is served. And my wife's like, you've lost your goddamn mind now. <laughs> what? Did you see what that horse did? Did you? Here's the weird part, though, too. Mm-hmm. It won't. It will only do it if it's an animal ferocious enough that it feels it could kill it. 
I've only had it do it once when it was a cougar, but it will mainly do it only for a bear. Yeah. Now, cougars are 50-50 wolves. Eh, they won't do it for a wolf usually. Usually, you they'll hear the wolf and you can run. Mm-hmm. But bears are so quiet, like you don't, you don't hear them until the last minute, which is crazy, right? It's like right. my favorite story of this is I was bounty hunting. Mm-hmm. And I have all the intention of bringing this dude in alive. I don't want to kill him. I'm going to shoot his posse. He has only four dudes. So I, I got my shotgun ready. I'm hiding behind a tree. I'm thinking they don't even know I'm there. I snuck up on their camp. I'm ready to go. What happens? Bear t- attacks, kills all four outlaws, including my bounty. Wow. And I'm just like, where did that thing even come from? I didn't even hear yeah. it. I'm like, I'm just standing there. I'm just watching it happen. Uh-huh. And the bear just doesn't see. I'm behind a tree, so the bear can't see me. My yeah. horse is down the road. I like walked a ways. I'm like, and the bear just mosey on. And I just looted the, looted the outlaws. Mm-hmm. Couldn't claim my bounty because, well, there was nothing left to claim. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, Sheriff, you won't believe this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. But that's that's something I want to see in a Halloween game, too. Like, if you're the cops, let's say you get, the, like, you could be the cops in the Halloween game. Mm-hmm. And you're going along, and you're the the kids. We saw the boogeyman. Same thing with the normal characters, where you either believe or not believe. And if you choose to do either or, there's a consequence for either or, or there's a good or bad for either or. It could because they could be pranking you. You know, it's Halloween, so. That's something I want to see, too, where, yes, you as the player can be deceived. The only way you can't be deceived is if you're being Michael himself, where you have the killer gets all the advantage in this game mm-hmm. and a lot of it, really. That's something I want to see in a Halloween game. Mm-hmm. One other thing that I was thinking of, um, I mean, some people may not like may not like this, but. I was thinking how awesome it would be, say, if we could get the original Team Silent together, back together again. All right, so here's another idea that I had. This this is more of a psychological game than it would be like an action game. Right. Okay, let's say that you are a um, six-year-old trick-or-treater. Right. And... Um, something happens, you get separated from everyone you're with. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you're walking through the town of Haddonfield, you know, everybody's gone in, um, and you're trying to find where, you know, your family went. You're looking for your family, and you're getting stalked by this thing called the shape. And it happens to be Michael Myers. And you're confronting like all these different things, um, like all these different, I guess, horrors and, and different things as you're going through the town of Haddonfield, you're going to the school, you're going to the hospital. Um, you know, you're going through some houses that may be abandoned or whatever. And each time there's, you see like Michael looks different and it's like each form, like each mask from the, uh, from the different films. Like each time you have an encounter with Michael, um, his mask looks a little bit different. Maybe it's a little more deformed. Maybe it's, um, a little more, uh, a little more menacing when you see him based on, you know, decisions that you make throughout the game, which order you, you take to go 
hunting for your family, the places you go. All right. And maybe you see this man, this man in black wandering around town. And he says that, you know, he interacts with you periodically and says he knows what's going on, who this shape is and that you, um, you know, have to do this and this and this and that. And whether or not you listen to what he tells you to do is up to you. Okay, so in Silent Hill fashion, um, you find a place that's kind of like a lighthouse because at the end of all the original Silent Hill games, um, you know, you would go to a lighthouse, which was symbolic of it's all, you know, it's all coming together. Everything's coming to light and the plot is going to unfold what you've been doing the whole time. Mm-hmm. Find out that this six-year-old boy that you are is Michael Myers, and you're going through a psychological journey of whether you're going to, you see all these things that may have triggered Michael to become what he is, and he's running from what he is going to turn into, which is the shape. We don't know his motivation. You know, why is he looking for his family? Is he wanting to be reunited with them? Is he wanting to kill them? And when you get to this lighthouse, you're sitting in a room with Loomis a psychological session with Loomis. And what you do after that is, you know, based on decisions that you made, whether or not you listen to the man in black, which he is going to lead you down the path to become the shape or going to listen to Loomis. And, you know, maybe he can keep Michael from turning into the shape. Yeah. I would, I like that idea because it's very, like you said, it's very Silent Hill. It's very psychological. Mm-hmm. I could also see where you're also maybe as a side game, you're a babysitter mm-hmm. and you have to protect the kids inside the house mm-hmm. while not trying to get in the house. <laughs> right. <laughs> I do. But I like that idea where you're going down the road and you just see the man in black and you know he's you're not getting too many hints Mm -hmm. you're getting very little of what's going on and it's sort of ultimately your choice of what happens and like you said the choices you make affect you know they have an action Mm -hmm. that is i'm not worthy that's silent hill yeah i'll just like if you got silent hit the team silent to make a Halloween game where it's you're playing as a six year old trick or treater, which was what Michael what started in the beginning. Right. Michael Halloween costume and he was six years old. And um you know at that moment, you know, what do you do? Will Michael listen to his instinct? Will he, you know, suppress that instinct and you know I just I just thought that would be kind of a cool concept. And, uh, that way you would get to see all the different masks of Michael, you know, all the different forms that he would take, kind of like um, like the pyramid head look different several times when James would encounter him. You know, the the color, the shape of the helmet would be a little bit different. So, uh, yeah, I thought that would be kind of a, a neat concept to uh, to have in a Halloween game. Another thing you could do is to is sort of to give a little bit of a nod to Silent Hill too. You know how you had the picture of Mary? You have a picture of your family. Mm-hmm. Less you, the less you look at it, mm-hmm. the more tragic. That's sort of where you're going down the road of Michael. Because if you're looking at the photo and going, or better yet, you have a picture of your mom and dad, and you have a picture of Judith. Judith, yeah. And if you put Judith in the picture, you're not going to kill her. But if you leave her out of it, you're going to kill her. Yeah. Where some, like, you know what I mean? Somehow where you have to put Judith with the family. Yeah. Where she's not just your victim. And But if you don't, well, she is. Oh, well, she is your victim. <laughs> 
Do you think that because they have Kane Hodder doing um, Leatherface, do you think they'll have? Do you think it'll be just like the Friday the Thirteenth game? Um, I don't know. It it could be. I haven't really played the new Friday the Thirteenth game very much. I've just seen a few clips of it on YouTube. Do you have it? Yeah. What it is? Okay. Each each board is sort of separate unto itself. Mm-hmm. So, like Pinehurst is Pinehurst, then it's a whole board. But each board is a campground. So there's okay. Camp Crystal Lake, Camp um, Pine, Pinehurst, Camp Higgins, Higgins mm-hmm. Haven, et cetera, et cetera. And so, as now the difference is with Jason. You get a time limit, and obviously there's multiple players. The one thing I hate about the Friday the 13th game, this is something they should have patched. <laughs> if you're playing, again, if you're a, if you're the counselor, and Jay, the person being Jason leaves the room, the game's over. Uh-huh. What I think they should have did was, let's say they're, let's say, it just starts and there's seven people left because you get like eight count, seven, eight counselors. Take one of the counselors and have them be Jason. Like just transfer, like, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Transfer it where they're Jason. Uh-huh. And that's something. To, and another thing, when you're Jason, you can knock out the electricity, set traps. Uh-huh. Um, the kill feature is crazy. So you played that game? Yeah, I have it. I've played it. Oh, it's, it's really I, fun. Like I had it when in, I got it. I'm trying to think how long I've had it. I've had it for a while. I think when I, it was it's like you would play as one of the counselors. So you actually play as Jason in that game? Yes. Wow. And, now here's the thing: you can choose between most. The only Jason you can't choose it. Well, no, you can. I'm trying to think if you could choose Uber Jason. No, you can't. But. For the most part, because I'm, again, I'm not too, too, where I've got most, I've got all the Jasons, unless they make Uber Jason unlockable, but you can be a counselor, you can pick your counselor, and you get perks, you can pick your perks, you you get to buy them. With Jason, like certain Jason, Jasons have different traps, and if you get to a certain level, you can pick your weapon. Like, you could pick, like, the spear or the machete or whatever. I'm not that high of a level yet, so. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) And here's the thing. I prefer being a counselor because I like to survive. Mm -hmm. And that way, if I get killed, oh, Jason snapped me in half. Mm -hmm. Look, hon, I'm dead. (laughs) Again? Again? Yes, buddy. Yes. It's awesome. <laughs> Just like, oh my god! I like somebody. I forget who it was. Was like driving the car around, mm-hmm. and Jason's not. And like Jason's not after the person in the car. Jason's after everybody else that includes me. The person stops in front of the cab, and I'm at. I get out to go to the car. They ditch me. They just poof, hit the gas. I'm like, I'm like. I just stop. I wanted to like give the emoji of the finger, and by, <laughs> before I could, you know, Jason just like picks me up and chucks my ass through a window so fast, and this is wow. like, like, dick, <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, buddy, thanks. Oh, but it's that- it's funny. It's a the most to me the most tense game is is isolation. Mm-hmm. But who, as a developer, who would you pick to make Halloween? I know I would not pick Konami um, because uh, just after what happened with Silent Hill and Hideo Kojima and just all that craziness that happened there, it's just that's too much drama. Um, I would like. Um, Rockstar because they would not be afraid to pull back or like to you know 
withhold anything and they really push that m rating the limits of what the m rating can uh, be allowed with or um you know i wouldn't even mind like an indie developer uh someone that uh, um you know would be eager to make a very good game and to put it out there and really trying to make a name for themselves and really give a project and a name like halloween the love and the care and attention it would deserve i would like rockstar would be my top choice because I, we've seen grand theft auto i've played the red dead redemption games and i've been blown away by them and they have horror elements in them they're not necessarily horror games or western games but there's moments of just sheer horror in them where it's like oh oh no like in red dead 2 you get the you'll you can you can track down a serial killer by following clues. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Another one I would not mind is Unreal Engine. They've done the Batman games. They did Vampire. Um, I will say, I don't think this one will do it, but they did do Alien Isolation. If they can get the team that's doing Warhammer now and bring them on to do an a Halloween game, I would trust Sega to do it. Mm-hmm. I would trust Sega. But only, only if they get the team that did Alien Isolation back to do it. I think the big what the big question mark would be Capcom. Would they do a Halloween video game? Uh, I'm, I'm with you, though. I wouldn't trust Konami as far as I could throw them. Um, yeah. Which isn't far. <laughs> I think I think Konami would probably make it a little too cutesy um, and go more the way of like a mobile kind of game, like we were talking about at the beginning of the video. Yeah. Um, Capcom would be. Uh, I like Capcom, but I think they would make it a little too combat heavy. Yeah. And it it wouldn't really feel much like a. Uh, I think they would they would steal the feel. Mm-hmm. It's basically what I would feel like they would do. They would steal the feel and the tone of the game. I think too with Capcom. It, it, sometimes Capcom's a tale of two ga- two different games, even though they make the same. They make it's the same brand name of like. Okay, Resident Evil is a great example. The Resident Evil 2 remake is really, really good. Mm-hmm. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, yeah, that shit sucks. But um, the the remake of Nemesis is just cutscene heavy, and it's just like, really, it, like really. That's a shame because see, I was wanting to I was wanting to try it because Resident Evil 3 Nemesis was my favorite of the originals, so I haven't tried that one yet, so it's not that great. They basically turn in. It's all but a shooter. It's yeah. all. It's all but. I won't say it is one, because there are moments where you're where you're doing other things. But I again, it's the same thing with Final Fantasy VII, where if you just take that away and add the gameplay. And here's the thing too. If you've ever wanted to win a date with Jill Valentine, uh-huh. okay, this is a great opportunity to have that date. And no, her chaperone on this date is not her dipshit dad. It's Nemesis. So before you could, you know, give that girl a kiss, there's Nemesis. Before, and yeah. then you go again, there's Nemesis. What the f- Get up. Yeah. 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 He's ever. I'll say this, though. There's things they should have did with that where you should have been able to play as Nemesis. Mm -hmm. And they should have they should have really changed this game and 180 it where there were more stars members and you were Nemesis tracking them down, killing them. Mm -hmm. Sort of we've talked about Michael Myers, where if you're Michael Myers, you stalk random people. Well, imagine stalking the stars members and being Nemesis. That would have been awesome. And is that in that game? No. no yeah. It's not. So, yeah, Nemesis. Uh, Pat, I'd, my, 
I told my wife, I said, you know what I miss? Rental stores, because I could have rented this game and saved my ass 60 bucks from fucking yeah. buying the piece of shit. Hmm. I got a promo on it after I bought Because here's the thing. I should not beat a game in three days. Yeah. I should not beat a, any game that I beat in three days. You know it's not challenging. Resident Evil 2, it took me, the remake, it took me at least three weeks. Yeah. And that and that's just with Leon, because I took my time. Mm-hmm. And then Claire took me another two and a half. So, mm-hmm. but with Nemesis, no, it took me three days, and it was just like, I told my wife, I'm like, huh, I beat the game. She's like, you fucking what? It's only three days. <laughs> She, I thought she come over. She seen the credits rolling. She goes, "There's no way." I'm like, yeah. "There you go." <laughs> I, she's like, "Was it that easy?" And I'm like, "The most challenging part of it mm-hmm. is the aiming. If you get your aiming down in that game, you're gold." Yeah, that's it. But other than that, yeah, no. No. Yeah, I I noticed like kind of a, a swift price drop on the game, so uh, it kind of made me wonder. You know, um, I, I know the Resident Evil Two remake was like really had really high standards and was is still you know pretty. I'm not going to say steeply priced, but it's you know it's still moderately high for a a game that's been out as long as it has. And I, I saw that the Resident Evil 3 remake was was quite a bit lower, so it kind of gave me a little bit of pause before I bought the game. I believe the reason I I'll, I will blame Final Fantasy VII's lack of price drop on two things. One, people still go and play it, and two, the goddamn fucking integrate that they should have just made a part of the game anyway. That's what I think. Honestly, that's why its price hasn't dropped, and. Mm-hmm. I remember going into GameStop and I said, you're still charging that much for that game. I said, you can't power that down. And they're like, why do you want to buy it? I'm like, no, no, I own the shit. I'm like, no. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, I can just put it on my PS4 and play it anytime I want. I said, Here's the biggest change of that, too. Mm-hmm. Cloud, there's moments where I don't think... Th- Here's where I think the biggest difference is. I don't think Cloud and Tifa are going to wait till later to have this big powwow. Because I got to believe Tifa with this feels way more direct in the game. Uh Like there's a difference between some of the characters, obviously. Uh, But yeah, three... Avoid seven play, but watch yourself on it because the cutscenes get a little they have repetitive points in, like you were talking about, Aaron. Yeah, they if they just cut back on those and add some of the gameplay in, like for example, instead of having that, why don't why don't they have you playing as you know Yofi? A materia thief, and that's that's what they basically did with the integrate. They took Yofi and sort of mixed her in a bit. It's like, well, why didn't you just do that there? And you could have had a whole other game within a game instead of having this senseless cutscene here and here. I do I get why I get more why Final Fantasy VII did their cutscenes than I did Resident Evil Three did theirs. Yeah. Like I don't. You don't need to show me through a cutscene that Nemesis is on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> like you don't. I get it. He's on. I can see he's on my ass when he knocks me down and throws me fifteen feet away. Um, you know, or he's launching a rocket launcher on me. Mm-hmm. And I don't need to see a cutscene where they drop the rocket launcher joke. No, he can just have it with him. I do. My biggest takeaway, though, too, with that is Nemesis does not kill Brad. And that pissed me off to such a degree. 
Mm-hmm. Because that was one of the best moments of three words. Yeah, like, it was. Heart, it's heart wrenching to watch. It is. Anytime I think of Resident Evil Three Nemesis, the first thing I think of is when Brad meets Jill at the police outside the police station. That's the first thing I think of. Right, and that doesn't. Jill doesn't go to the police station in three, but that's sort of again they change things. I get. Look, the point of a remake is to change something. I get that. But what did, other than adding some flashy cutscenes and showing off your cool graphics here, it didn't really do much for me. I more like Carlos's campaign than I did Jill's because it wasn't, it didn't feel cutscene heavy. Really? Really. Carlos's campaign. The game is split into two halves Carlos, okay. Jill. They uh-huh. give Carlos some of his own campaign a bit. Now, I wanted more of an own, more, basically what I feel there should have been, there should have been one whole disc of Jill. Yeah. One whole disc of Carlos and one whole disc of Nemesis. <laughs> that should have been Resident Evil 3 in my point of view. Mm-hmm. But no. But no. no. Mm. Wow. The that's, Evil Dead. that's a big disappointment. Yes, it is. The Evil Dead game will come out this year, so mm-hmm. there's that. Oh. Too. But yeah, I really, uh, I really, really do hope that they get um, that they can get a somewhere get a Halloween game off the ground. And um, one thing I was thinking of that I would love, you know, Halloween is is very, and to me, it's the scariest of a lot of the horror franchises because of Michael. But yeah. it's also the one that's like the most vibrant colors, like the streets of Haddonfield. Um, you know, it's a very pretty orange and fall scenery. And I would love to see something like that in the game. But like maybe the the colors are like the orange and everything that it's a little oversaturated and where it's kind of bleeding and a little um, that it's a little off putting and it's a little bit disturbing to kind of create and and set that mood a little bit i'd like i would love it where if you're walking toward a car and you open the car door body falls out like oh shit yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you weren't have, expect have to, you would have to walk in a body shop somewhere and see someone's coveralls missing so right. no right. it's michael that's a staple you have to have a dead mechanic somewhere that's doesn't have his clothes on I would like it like if you're like walking down the streets and there's like the Phelps they have a shout out to one have Phelps garage mm-hmm. and see the mechanic hanging by the neck and he's like in his box or it's like oh oh shit yeah <laughs> that guy had a rough day at the office oh yeah yeah <laughs> wow oh shit or better yet, when you go up to go up to the guy who's like maybe he's leaned up against the wall or something, and he he's in his box. And you're like, well, what? and you go towards him, he falls down. He, there's a knife sticking in his chest, or his neck snapped or something. Oh no! <laughs> and and that's the thing about you know about Michael is just he had such creative kills, and uh, you know it just. You never knew what he was going to do. I would like it to where. If you're Michael, you can enter the house. You know, you can walk in and out of any house. Uh Lock doors. Basically. All you got to do to get past a locked door is walk near it and you get two options. You get you get stealth or force. Stealth is the door just unlocks for you. Mm-hmm. Stealth, you punch through the goddamn door and you yeah. <laughs> oh, then, yeah. And then, boom, you walk in, you stab one person. You could literally pick up a knife in the kitchen and carry it with you. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, well, that, let me ask this. Um, if they do make a Halloween game, Yes, sir. Would you think 
okay, let's let's assume that you're playing as someone else and that Michael is the antagonist in this. You don't play as Michael. Okay. Do you want to be able to kill Michael? In the game? Yeah. Mm. No. Here's here's the thing. If you're the antagonist, you have a time limit. Mm-hmm. Ha- Halloween. Okay, so let's start at nighttime. Let's start from, we'll say, what, let's get dark in the fall about six o'clock, five o'clock on the R E R and R time, East Coast. So let's start from 5 p.m. to 12 midnight. Yeah, 5 p.m. to 12 midnight to survive. Yeah. And basically, if you die, if you collect all the little things we've been talking about in this game and you survive, you get to keep them and that helps you buy certain things. But if you die, and this is going to piss a lot of gamers off, which I live for, uh, <laughs> you lose all those things Mm -hmm. if you don't make it out at midnight Uh you lose everything you've ever picked up Uh and that's now here's the thing we've talked about risk reward right Uh warn somebody gives you points Uh again not warn somebody if they don't die it gives you points if they die you lose points Uh so you do get deductions your biggest perk, here's the one thing I would give to the, to the player. You would be able to buy, the, if you, there would be an unlockable. It would be called Dr. Loomis's Special Gun. And it would be the original six-shooter revolver from 1978. And if you get to purchase that gun, it has infinite ammo. Mm-hmm. That would be the That would be the one perk. And here's why. Because number one, it's Loomis's gun. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the only reason. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, with Dr. Loomis, if you, you can play as Dr. Loomis, you would have a lot of perks. Number one, Dr. Loomis, this would be the only character who has it, is what's called Michael Myers Radar, where he, he gets a bigger proximity of where Michael might be. And he's the only character that gets that. Right. Whether it's McDowell's or Pleasance's. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I would have. What would you have? That, that sounds good to me. Um, I, uh, I would think that I wouldn't want Michael, even if you, you win the game, Michael doesn't really die. And, you know, maybe during the end credits, you can hear him breathing like you do at the, you know, of the original movie. Uh, but I would think that that would be like kind of a cool trophy. Like if you did get Loomis's revolver and the sixth time that you put a bullet in Michael and you actually hit him, then you get like a, a notification on the screen. Like you want a trophy that says I shot him six times, you know, <laughs> something like that. That would, that would be a cool achievement. Um, now, you cannot. I would say this. You can knock him down. But yeah. You kill and, him. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the thing about Michael. You don't I, I think in any Halloween game, I think it would be important that you can't actually kill Michael. I'll say this with the gun, you do get an accuracy award for your mm-hmm. like if you shoot Michael, the more you shoot at Michael, the more you hit him. Mm-hmm. You went now here's the drawback of shooting Michael. Let's say there are still kids on the street. You can actually hit innocent people. And if you do, that's a big deduction. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, like, you again, the game should be where it's a bit realistic, where you really have to make your choices carefully. Mm-hmm. But don't be afraid to take the risk either. Right. Because that would be a fun game. That's what makes the game fun, like, whether you're playing Isolation, Red Dead, or anything. Silent Hill 2, what's the biggest risk? It's going out on, you're not safe in or out, but yeah. it's going out and trying to solve the pol- outside and like gather things you might need, like mm-hmm. finding shotgun shells, finding the pistol shells. Those are cool risk, right? So why not have risk in a Halloween game? 
Absolutely. I agree. I agree. But I think that there's there's got to be like a little bit of forgiveness. Like if you would accidentally hit like shoot bits from Halloween five, then yeah, no points deducted for that one. Mark, are you hinting you may shoot the PCs on purpose? <laughs> one, uh, yeah, if, if Spitz from uh, from Halloween, yes, I would. Yeah, that one I would. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, mm-hmm. my PC I would shoot on purpose would be Michael from Halloween 5, Tina's boyfriend. Straight up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, and I would. And I'd call to him and go, Michael. And then when he'd go, what? You know, kidding. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That's that's classic. That, that, that car, yeah. That was a sweet car he has. It was. It's like everything that dipshit got, he deserved. Like, for yeah. me, I <laughs> it's like he did not deserve his girlfriend Mm -hmm. he did not deserve that car but he damn sure deserved to be killed yes he did and he deserved to see his car being scratched before he got it in the face yeah yeah I love that part (laughs) is there anything you want to add before we go uh, yeah, um, are you, uh, okay, so Halloween Kills comes out tomorrow on Blu-ray, and um, I'm getting the Blu-ray, so I haven't seen the extended scene yet. I have I haven't watched your video about the extended scene for Halloween Kills yet, because I'm waiting to see it myself, so um, are I'll, you? I wish they would not have added that. Oh, okay, gotcha. I, if you're going to add, like, in a full extended scene uh-huh. add something longer uh-huh. like I'll give an example this won't spoil nothing for you but okay because you've seen the movie yeah yeah I've seen it twice I would have had where Lord where you see Lori standing in the hospital at the end I would have had them rolling out or rolling Karen's body and Karen wouldn't be dead. Karen would be clinging to life. Mm-hmm. And she grabs, she would grab Karen's hand and squeeze it, and Karen would squeeze her hand very like, lightly. And they just get her to a heart monitor, and at, right as she crashes, you see the hand let go, and the monitor crashes, and then she dies. Mm-hmm. And then you would see Lori Shard's hand co- cover over her eyes. And you would see now Allison would have to have surgery on her leg. Mm-hmm. So you see Allison laying in a hospital cast, mm-hmm. cast on her leg. And you have a visitor. Mm-hmm. And she goes, Show him in. You know, mm-hmm. Allison knows who it is. Mm-hmm. And here's, you would see this man wearing this leather jacket. You wouldn't know who it is. Mm-hmm. And you would hear this voice say, I don't teach people self-defense. I teach them how to kill, Mm ma'am. I taught your grandmother that. Well, you're going to teach me. Uh And you see the camera turn. And it's Kurt Russell. That Uh would have been that would have been my extended scene. Uh I don't Uh love it. I wish there was. I don't know what the del- that the alternate ending is, but the del- the extended scene, okay. yeah, they could have did better. Oh, okay, gotcha. They gotcha. could have. They could have. In my view, I mm-hmm. get what I get what they're going for. They're they're going for another callback to s- a certain something, mm-hmm. but it's just like, yeah, you with Very. everything else you did in this movie that I liked, you didn't need that. Mm-hmm. There's just there's things in a Halloween movie, if you have enough nostalgia to one specific event, you don't need more nostalgia. I gotcha. You know, that's just my view. You may feel differently if you do. Please let me know. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? I, I value your opinion. I value your opinions. You know, <laughs> I'd live to be wrong. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, I do. You know, it's like <laughs> somebody asked me, "How can you watch the 2012 Dark Shadows movie?" I just can. Yeah. It's a movie. Exactly. <laughs> but you know, I I love it when um, you know there's movies that I guess you have um, like in about and it may be a negative opinion and then somebody says something and you think, well, I've been wrong about this movie the whole time. And then it changes everything and you turn around and you love it. And that did happen to me this year with a movie series that we've been talking about and uh, that we've talked about in the last year or so. And, uh, you know, when we get to that movie, I'm, I'm excited to talk about that too. So, uh, um, is, it, is it the last Jedi? It is. Okay. Yes. I'm going to disagree with you, man, now. <laughs> that, we, I have okay. some cynical view of that movie, and uh, it was really hard to unsee that. And then one person you know, kind of took on my cynical view of it and helped me see it in a different way, and it completely 180 my view of the movie. I can't wait till we pick up our Star Wars, because we got to do The Force Awakens first. Yeah. But... Are you available for tomorrow or tomorrow night? Um, yes. Okay, yes. So 10.30 tomorrow night, me, you, at Fred Barnabas, Superman discussion, my friend. Superman yeah. discussion, which you guys no. are carrying the show for that shit. I want you to. <laughs> yes. The, the host is just going to be sitting there like, I'm listening. Uh-huh. <laughs> there is. There is one thing I'll say, though, too, with with any movie. Mm -hmm. And it it sort of hints to my answer of The Last Jedi. We've talked about Star Wars needing to do certain things. Maybe, maybe, you know, for its runtime, doing certain things, making Mm -hmm. a film, being Star Wars being more than three films at times. Mm-hmm. And it feels like I don't want to give away my answer, but it it just feels like the Last Jedi sort of does that too in a way. Mm-hmm. And I won't give completely why my answer is that, but when we do that movie, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, because I I felt the exact same way that it was just like an extended version of The Force Awakens, and um, uh, yeah, but I'll. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to talk about it. So, right. we'll, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how we feel. <laughs> Mark, Mark's gonna Mark's gonna give me the stone cold stunner if I don't agree with him. No, <laughs> uh, not at all. Not. <laughs> uh, that's what. That's what about me and you. We're not like that. Uh, yeah. Not Someone, one ever. Someone's like, do you ever worry about someone getting mad over your opinion? I'm like. No, no, really. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like an opinion, dude. Like you, like I'm like yeah, crazy. Like, like, dude. And I told somebody this. I was like, listen, name me three movies you don't like, and they named me three. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I like two of those three. Mm-hmm. Hate me for it? And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I think I've uh, I think I've messed around with you and and uh, and Fred Bart a couple of times where I've uh, like took the block and took a screenshot of it and, and sent it to you guys like if you know we didn't agree on something or like you all would do like a hot take on something just messing around with you all it's just it's just fun to mess around like that but there's no way that's just crazy how people how people get so mad over opinions on stuff like that. It, when we when we disagree, I know we're gonna disagree on the on the last Jedi. I'm just gonna put a gift of the Dudleys putting somebody through a table. This is what I did to Mark Gelman. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's it's like you're we're supposed to have fun. We're here to have fun. So that, exactly. <laughs> but tomorrow our Superman discussion is finally happening. I'm excited for that to Dude, bring you. In. I got. You and Fred Barnabas in a group on Skype, so mm-hmm. I'll message him tonight and let him know that too. Mm-hmm. So I, when I call the group, it mm-hmm. should ring both of you guys. So right, awesome. 
Mark, man, it is always a pleasure bringing you on, man. I man. love talking to you. Love Tomorrow talking. night's gonna be fun. Yes, it is. And I'm gonna send I'm gonna send a video of Halloween to the theme just so you can play it for your stepdaughter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. But you have a great night, man. You too. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.